So now that we've uh, finished our discussion of working with spatial data and, and also just generally working in R, in this last section we're going to focus on making predictions, both just from data tables and also making predictions back to map space, like for every pixel in a data set. Um, so what we're mainly going to focus on is the package caret, which provides access to a wide variety of different machine learning methods um, that can be applied to your data to you know, answer different types of questions. Uh, this is not the only environment to work in, but I find that it, within R it's one of the best environments for machine learning because it offers a very consistent um, uh, interface in which to work with a variety of algorithms. So before we can actually get into working with this in R, working with data in R, we need to, or working with machine learning in R, we need to actually understand some of the background. So that's the point of this series of videos. Um, and then we'll look at actually executing some of this in, in code. All right, so to begin, I just want to talk through some examples of how we use these types of techniques in the geospatial sciences. So one common example uh, or, or use of machine learning um, in GIS and remote sensing is for land cover classification. So here we're trying to predict what the land cover is at every location or pixel using a set of input values, such as Landsat imagery or other types of remotely sensed data. So here's an example of a process where we've um, produced a land cover data set for a county um, by inputting, um, uh, by working through a, a method, methodological process um, and using imagery and machine learning to um, make those predictions over space. And here's another example of a similar process. So this was using uh, support vector machines and random forest, which are two different machine learning algorithms, to try to differentiate grass, grassy or herbaceous areas that were mining related, so those are the areas in brown here, and the areas not mining related, shown there in yellow. So again, this is a classification type process. Um, here's an example where we're trying to predict the probability or likelihood of something occurring at a location. So in this example, the orange areas represent herbaceous areas and the green areas represent forested areas and the white areas are neither herbaceous or forested, so things like water or development. So for, for these areas, we've tried to predict the likelihood that they are forested or, or shrubby wetlands, and shown there in green, and or, her, or emergent wetlands, um, dark, again, darker shades of green. So instead of a hard classification, so is a wetland, is not a wetland, here we're getting the likelihood that it might be a wetland based on um, landscape characteristics. Um, this is another example of a likelihood prediction. So this is trying to predict into the future. So um, we have this mid-Atlantic region, and we, are li we would like to know um, or predict the likelihood that an area might be surface coal mined in the future. So um, all the areas that have coal the, were predicted, and then the areas in red were predicted to have a more likely chance of being coal mined in the future. Note we didn't actually predict areas um, throughout the full extent because there was not coal through that full extent, so there'd be no point in making the prediction where there isn't any coal. So that's another example of like a probabilistic type prediction. Okay, so let's look at kind of the broad types of predictions that we can make using, uh, using machine, machine learning methods. Okay, so we can predict things that are numeric or continuous, so things like interval and ratio type data. Um, that can be accomplished using regression. You are probably familiar with regression or multiple regression, or if it's not a linear relationship, some type of polynomial regression. Um, but machine learning can also be used to predict continuous variables. So as an example, this is a data, this is a, an image from the multi-resolution land characteristics consortium that makes the national land cover database. And for all areas that are forested in the country, they have predicted um, or predicted or estimated the percent canopy cover on a pixel by pixel basis. So that's a percentage, so it's a continuous measurement. Um, this actual pro this product was done with the random forest algorithm um, in particular or specifically. 
We've seen this already as an example, but we can also predict things that are categorical. So instead of something continuous, you're predicting types of things. So for example, types of land cover, types of wetlands, types of forest, um, uh, types of, of uh, development or something, right? So it's categories, so nominal data. Um, yeah, and then we can all, if we can, and a kind of a special case of this is binary, where we're just predicting one or it's one thing or another thing, right? So upland versus wetland, or private versus public, or forest versus not forest. So lots of techniques are available to make predictions of categories. So for example, logistic regression is a different version of regression that's for uh, cl uh, classification problems as opposed to regression problems. If you've done remote sensing, you might be familiar with some of the parametric methods that we use to do land cover, like supervised classification methods. So maximum likelihood, parallel pipette, and minimum distance to means. But machine learning, again, can also be used in this context. Um, if you have done some remote sensing, you may be familiar with the concepts of supervised versus unsupervised classification. So in supervised classification, you're giving the computer examples of things. So you're basically giving the computer point locations or polygons that represent different type of land cover, for example, in this example. And then the computer will use those examples plus some type of learning method or algorithm to try to predict every pixel or location on the landscape or categorize it into those different groups. So the key thing with supervised classification is you have to give the computer examples up front. So you're supervising the learning by giving it examples. In contrast, unsupervised classification doesn't rely on training samples. So instead, the computer uses an algorithm to cluster similar, similar pixels or locations based on the values, such as the image bands. And then afterwards, the analyst has to look, to the, look at those clusters and then manually categorize them into the meaningful categories like land cover categories. So both supervised and unsupervised classification requires user input, but the question is when does the user input occur? For supervised the classification, the user input happens at the beginning in the form of training data. For unsupervised classification, it happens at the end of the process as the analyst must take these clusters and assign them to meaningful categories. In this class and in the, in this and in the machine learning section in particular, we're going to focus predominantly on supervised classification methods. So we're going to develop training data and predictor variables and use that to supervise a classification process and create a prediction. Um, if you're interested in, in particularly in the use of machine learning in the context of land cover classification and remote sensing based mapping, I uh, point you to this paper. It's, a, it's an open access, so if you want to read it, you can read it for free. We can also make probabilistic predictions. So instead of a hard classification, yes or no, or A or B, it's the likelihood of being yes or no, or A or B. And I already showed you some examples of that. So again, we have um, we have uh, like this wetland example where it's likely to be a wetland versus unlikely, or um, or this example where it's the future, the likelihood of future mining, right? So again, it's not really regression because you're trying to predict the likelihood of a class. Um, and it's not really classification because it's not a hard classification. Um, really what this is, is just a special case of classification. So instead of returning the class, you're returning the likelihood of it being in a particular class. So similar to classification methods, you can use things such as logistic regression, um, there's maximum entropy or maxent modeling, and then also machine learning methods, again, which is our focus here. And you can also predict counts. So for example, if you were a, an epidemiologist, you might be interested in predicting the occurrence or likelihood of, uh, of, uh, of like a disease occurring at like within a specific region. So your output would be you know, t 20 cases, right? Um, so that can be done with machine learning and with like Poisson regression methods. We won't really look at count um, predictions in here, but I just wanted to note that that's another option. Okay, so we're going to stop here in this first section, and then in the next section we're going to step through the process of doing supervised machine learning.